Oh, hi! I'm Stephen and are you like me who's always been wondering why we constantly eat food? To be energized obviously, but how does it really happen at a molecular level? So, you see, we perform a lot of activities each day like exercising, but where do we get the energy that enables us to do this? The answer is ATP, which is produced through the process called cellular respiration. The first step in cellular respiration is the glycolysis, which happens in the cell cytoplasm. It is where the glucose molecule from the food we eat be converted into two pyruvates together with two NADH and two ATP. Then, these two pyruvates will be transported into the mitochondrial matrix. They will be oxidized there and be converted into acetyl coenzyme A, which will be an input for the next step. The next step of the cellular respiration is called the Krebs cycle or also known as the citric acid cycle. You know, to put it simply, it consists a lot of chemical reaction in order to break down the acetyl CoA further. After two turns of the cycle, six molecules of NADH, two molecules of FADH2, two molecules of ATP, and a byproduct of two molecules of carbon dioxide which will be produced, which will proceed into the next step. But wait, I've mentioned NADH and FADH2 multiple times already, but what exactly are they? Basically, they are coenzymes that have the ability to transport and carry electrons, just like how this bike carries me around. On the last stage of this process, electron transport chain and chemismosis occur in the intermembrane space of the mitochondria called cristae. In this phase, NADH and FADH2 carries electrons through a series of protein complexes that drives the massive production of ATP, just like how these balls roll down the stairs. With oxygen as the final electron acceptor. Although there is no exact value due to the different factors, the net number of ATP produced by the end of this process averages between 36 to 38 ATPs for one glucose molecule, along with water as a byproduct. Isn't it mesmerizing how our body or our cells in particular can perform this process? So, we need to eat our food in order for us to have enough supply of glucose that will undergo the process of cellular respiration for ATP production. Again, I am Stephen and reminding you to never skip your meals.